Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I'm Dax Holt here in sunny California. That is Adam Glenn over there wearing his beanie because it's cold as hell in New York. It's also my hair is long. And his hair is <laughs> right now. Uh, you welcome to the podcast, I'm, guys. Yeah, thank you for coming to the podcast, Dax. I've been doing the same where I haven't just I haven't got a haircut since November. And I know you'd be like, oh my God, dude, I can't believe I can never go that long. But this time of year, I wear hats a lot. And honestly, I wanted like that beanie hair. Like yeah. you want the hair that looks good in a sock hat. Poking out at the bottom. Yeah, just... it looks it looks cool in a sock hat, but it looks terrible when that the sock <laughs> hat because my hair just doesn't know what to do. Um, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. It was uh, it's been a a big week, I would say, for entertainment news, which is always fun for me because I love this shit. Um, you know, with the Golden Globes that just happened the other night, I feel like it brought up a lot of attention to Hollywood. People talking about it. You know, the funny thing is I didn't even realize that, like, the Globes were going on until, like, last second. I think just because I, I haven't been paying attention as much. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, my God, Globes are on tonight. I, I better, like, pay attention. Um, but I actually saw Dante Greco's. He was posting some stuff you sent me of uh, being at the pre-party. So I, it kind of, like, got me back into um, award show season. I feel like it just hit so quickly. All of a sudden we're, we're back at it again with all the awards. Good. I didn't know if we were going to have an award show this a season uh, with the actors' strike, but now we are going to have one uh, on this podcast today. We have this might be the most jam packed celebrity podcast ever. <laughs> I mean, to have we have Andy Cohen, we have Charles Barkley, we have Kevin Hart, and Dante Greco. Yeah, <laughs> today. I mean, it's a big day. Um, before we go talk to these guys. Um, we love reviews. We love them so much. We read them on the air. Dax, do you have a review ready for us? Yes. All right. This one is five stars. It's from JD Paul, Paul Madier. I don't know. One zero one six. Uh, title is so fun. Adam was always very nice to me as a random fan of certain celebrities in New York city. Always grateful to support. Hi, Adam. Hi, Dax. Do you know who that is? I do know she is. She's a very nice person. You Thank you for the, the review. How do you say the J name properly? JD. You, you want to read? You want to say well, how it's on there? How do you say the last name? Paul, Paul Bader? Um, say how you, pronounce it how you see it. The last J name has numbers in it too. So that's how you say it. Paul, like Robocop. JD Paul Bader 1060. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, she's. Uh, what? No, you know who that is. Uh, I do. Uh, I, I know, know her. Oh. You don't know. You don't know her. <laughs> Actually, she's, but she's been around for a long time. I love it. She's a great person. She's. Actually, no, so crazy. She, I know her. Uh, I've seen her. You know, I've known her for years. Uh, great person, very sweet. She comes to New York because she has. Her name is Jamie, and Jamie is like a fan of a few celebrities, which I respect. People like this because there in New York we have like these fan people that they will just try to get photos with anyone, anyone, and everything. Like, and it's gross because they're not. What's their name? Oh, I'll take a photo with them. Ask them for an autograph. They don't even know who they are. They just ask for an autograph and a photo. Jamie, on the other hand, is uh, a fan of Jessica Chastain. And like she just loves Jessica Chastain. She's a fan of her work. And Jessica Ch Chastain knows her. So when Jessica Chastain sees her outside an appearance or an event, she always stop and say, hey, Jamie, take a photo with her and sign whatever memorabilia she has. And because she's a legit fan of um, – mm of Jessica Chastain and you know so but Jamie's very cool thank you for the review Jamie I appreciate that um yeah Dax so obviously it's award season has kicked off I've said it before I'll say it again I love award season it just comes at the right time and this year people are like what's the best film did you see Oppenheimer did you see Barbie I know you didn't like Barbie I saw, I saw Barbie it's not that I didn't like Barbie I, it's I, people have that misconstrued I didn't not like Barbie. I, I thought the message was good. I thought my daughter was really entertained. I thought the costuming was amazing. I thought the visuals were really good. I, it came down to I was surprised at like how much money it had brought in because I was like, 
this movie doesn't like blow me away to the point where I'm like, oh yeah, I, I see why it is one of the top grossing movies of all time. You know what I'm saying? Like that's where I stay. Like it's it's not a terrible movie. I, I don't hate it by any means. I just was very surprised by why this movie had brought in as much money as it did. And I think it came down to marketing. I think it came down to bandwagoning, which people were like, oh, you saw Barbie? I got to see Barbie. We all got to see Barbie. We got to dress up in pink. Like, um, I think they just did a really good job with the promotion around this movie because I, I there was other movies that I feel like are, have, you know, they're just more exciting. I don't know. No, I, I, I get it. I, I totally get it. It was definitely great. You had to see Barbie because everyone told you, have you seen the question was, did you see Barbie yet? So you felt weird if you didn't see, it. you wanted to be a part yeah. of something. Uh, I saw it on a plane and I was, eh. and I saw Oppenheimer too, which was a fine movie, a little too long for me, but the acting was great. And, uh, a good perspective on that time. But anyway, we, it's not, want- it's not like for me, Titanic, anytime it's on TV, I'll watch it. I, it makes sense. Uh, Avatar. Why it's like, there's movies that you want to watch over and over and over and over again. And I, that one wasn't for me. Which one? Barbie. Barbie. I, it just, it's, yeah. if I see it on TV and be like, Oh, it looks cool again. Am I going to yeah. watch the whole thing again? Probably not. Like I do with like a Titanic or something. No, but listen, if, I, if Three Ninjas come on, comes on, I'm going to watch Three Ninjas. <laughs> great movie. 1993, 94, great year. I love that movie, Three Ninjas. Classic. I know it's so weird, dude. People are like, what did you do New Year's Eve? I, I didn't go out New Year's Eve. I watched the movie Only the Strong, which was a karate movie from like 94 That's on YouTube. That's how I spent my – when the balls dropped, I was watching a YouTube old karate movie. That's that's where I'm at in my life. Um, all right. I wanted to have Dante Greco on the show. Dante is an old colleague of mine. Dante does these live uh, TikTok streams, and he's out on the streets like me, but he also does these live TikTok streams talking about everything going on in the entertainment news. But Dante was out uh, kind of covering the pre-parties of the Golden Globe Awards, and I just want to get his experience from talking about – uh, from his experience from working, I'm sorry, working the Golden Globe pre party. So, Dante, how are you, my but my brody? How you doing? What's up, my brody? Good to see <laughs> my you, <brody>. again. <laughs> Dante. When you work the the nights, is it a late night for you, or how is it usually when you kind of do during award season? I try to avoid the late night. I try to do the um, the arrivals and get what I can there because you could be out there till one or two a.m. and like unless it's someone bit like if it was Taylor Swift. I would probably wait for it, but if it's just the average celebrity, I'm not going to wait. It was too cold in LA this weekend, anyway. But the Golden Globes have like the A list of A list. Like it is one of the award shows that you know you're going to get the biggest stars in Hollywood because you're getting the biggest stars from movie, television, even music. Sometimes, I mean, we saw Taylor Swift there. Um, tell me, who did you see this weekend? Who did you run into? Who did you cover? Because you were at. I saw you at what the Chateau Marmont covering some event. Chateau Marmont. I was there Friday night for the W Magazine uh, pre Golden Globes party. Chateau, by the way, was the place to be all weekend. It seemed like because the next night they had Vanity Fair, and then Sunday after the Globes they had the HBO party there. Uh, Which is funny because it's not that big inside. So where the hell are they putting everyone around the pool or what? Where where did everyone go? That's what I'm saying. Not only is it not that big, but outside it's a very narrow street and they didn't even have barricades up or anything. It was kind of unsafe because there are other cars just trying to drive up the street too. I'm surprised nobody got their foot ran over. But uh, I ran into the biggest name, the most surprising was Nicolas Cage because he's a guy that you never really see. He lives in Vegas and he's in town because he's in that movie, uh, something about dreams. But he was cool. We saw Tanashi singer, uh, Natasha Leone. She was interesting. Uh, Barry Keohan, I think that's how you pronounce his name, the guy from Saltburn who didn't use a prosthetic. That's all yeah. I know about him. I just had his wiener out on full display dancing that, around on Saltburn. That's, that's right. That's right. Didn't do it outside the party, unfortunately. But uh, And then Gabrielle Union, who I don't know if she's nominated, but she was by far the coolest celeb I saw all weekend. She got really? out of her Why? car. Why was she so cool? She gets out, and immediately it's like The Walking Dead. They converge on you, the graphers, the, the, the picture takers, the paps. And she stops, and she's taking oh. pictures with every single person as she walks around the SUV. 
very gracious, very humble about the whole thing. So that was nice. Um, Nicholas Cage was cool. He waved to people. He gave him a little bit, but like he wasn't really going to stop to talk. I think he signed a couple autographs. Actually, he almost started a fight between one of the paps and the uh, security for Chateau Marmont. There was a little bit of a scrum going on when he was trying to get back into his car. Uh, who else did I see? I saw Storm Reed, Julia Garner from Ozark. Oh, yeah. Jerry How is, she? From was she, is she cool? Yeah, Julia I like Julia a lot. She got out of the car and went right in. You know, she didn't want to yeah. stop. It's a bit intimidating. I, I sort of get it. You get out, everyone's clamoring like, oh, my God, Julia, can you sign? Blah, blah, blah. And then she just wanted to get out of there. Right, because there's she, no I barricade, mean, right? No barricade. No. I mean, she has just become so famous so quickly over the last, what, like six years or something like that as Ozark became crazy popular. But I really like her. She seems so cool. Maybe that wasn't the greatest moment, but yeah. <laughs> just well, because it, there's a lot going on. It's nighttime. You're overwhelmed. Uh, but she does seem really cool generally. Yeah. Yeah, she seemed cool. Uh, Catherine Hahn was somebody who stopped Greta Gerwig. There was an obsessed Barbie fan who had a little Barbie cut out and she was like waving it like -da 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 -da. she at least stopped to turn around and give a nice wave her and her husband Noah Baumbach. So that was yeah. cool. I saw her the other day at the Knicks game and I tried to interview her and she's very like awkward when she plays off the awkward part like hi like uh, uh, she she I don't know she likes it but she tries to uh, she's. I don't know if she's dealing with it the best. She just. I, I think she is just awkward like that because I don't know yeah. if you saw her speech at the Globes, but the speech was awkward too. Yeah. A little bit. It was kind of like sure. nervous, you know. How when, was. When um, you, I just want, when you cover an event like this and you're covering all the pre parties and you're seeing all the people, do you stop and watch the Golden Globes as well? Or are you just like, no, I just want to try to catch people when they're at the parties or after, before? Yeah, so what I did on Sunday, I went out and I did a live stream around Beverly Hills and the surrounding area where they were having the Globes at the Beverly Hilton. And then after that, I went home and did a stream like watching and reacting to the Globes until I was pulled off for copyright violation and uh, <laughs> suspended from going live for a week. But. Yeah. Is the traffic for the Golden Globes, that area, is it just so insane? Don't even go in that area when something like that's going down? I couldn't believe how many people didn't seem to know the Globes were going on and they're driving down Santa Monica Boulevard because the Beverly Hilton is right at uh, the Wilshire Santa Monica Boulevard uh, intersection for people who live in L.A., you know, and there were so many people stuck in traffic. And if you just went a couple blocks south or a couple blocks north, you would have been fine. But they had it locked down this year. You couldn't get anywhere close to the Beverly Hilton they had like security guards, uh, like casually dressed. It wasn't militant, uh, but they had security guards all over, like practically stretching to Century City Mall on the south end. And so I tried my best to get close with my phone, but I, I just was like, you know what? I'm not going to like try to like rush the awards or anything like that. I'm always wow. surprised that the stars can actually get there on time because when you are around an event like that, like it fucks up traffic everywhere around the area. Yeah. So like, how do they even get their SUVs to the right spot by the time that the award show is starting? I know people will obviously miss the red carpet or be late to it, but how do they even get in and out? I think yeah. that they stay either in the hotel or they stay in a surrounding hotel. The peninsula is mm -hmm. just behind the Beverly Hilton. So a lot of people are just going a short distance to get there. But I did read that the security, once you got inside, was so tight that there was a lot of backup with the cars. And then even when you get out, they're searching your bag multiple times. They're checking your press credentials multiple times. So, And yet they got the, the red carpet started on time. It was remarkable. And that, yeah, I, that theater or ballroom, it's not very big. We were there for the Emmys. It's It's pretty tiny for them to get as many people in there as many famous people in one room as they do i mean you see people are in the back and you're still super famous and you're in the back just because it's so small they don't have enough space yeah 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 i read that they can only they have about 1400 seats so it's a very tight list every studio gets one representative and then everyone who's nominated can bring like 
one person with them and then maybe they can do friends and family but it is a very small space yeah yeah it's um i think from my experience like the met gala when you, if you, people want to go to the met gala all the celebrities go to the hotel to get ready for the event so they might not be staying there so it's a little bit easier as far as the commute so they might go to the hotel or surrounding hotel they might not again they go in that morning get ready for it all day and then it's just an easier commute however you're right, Dax. They have a two-hour window to force all those celebrities in at that time. You know, it, obviously, the bigger stars get there an hour before the event, um, and they have to walk the red carpet, but also they have to get through and get to the seat. I mean, it's – I, I got to say, it's pretty – it's its organized chaos, and they do a pretty good job at it. And uh, I would love to see what it's like in person when someone is running late, when they got to rush to their chair. Let me ask you this. For Dante, though, how do you know – like when there's the pre-events, how do you know where they are? Do they let you know or do you just sort of know it's in the know? Well, for the big parties, the Hollywood Reporter had a very nice article telling us where and when all the, <laughs> the big parties were. Now, there were, yeah. of course, private parties and gated communities and stuff you're not going to get to. But these are good to just get people coming and showing their face and then getting out. Like Nicolas Cage was in there for maybe 15 minutes on Friday wow, night. Wow, really? Yeah. I mean, because there's so many parties to hit and maybe you walk in and you're like, this isn't even that cool. So you just, you get out. But um, it's, it's, they know that we're going to know. And I think they want the chaos a little bit. I mean, that's part of the fun of being a celeb. You don't want every single day people coming up to you trying to get autographs or take pictures or whatever. But like on an awards weekend, especially if you're nominated, it's exciting. There's energy, you know, there's cameras flashing. It's like you're famous. It's it's kind of cool. I think they like that. I think so my Don, favorite part of yeah. the entire Golden Globes was Paul Giamatti getting in and out afterwards with his statue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like fully walking into in and out, going up to the counter, like not even drive through, going into the counter setting his golden globe on the counter to order and pay for. I love that. Cause we've seen so many people go to the, to in and out after big award shows. I think Brad Pitt one year, one year after the Oscars. And uh, I mean, you've seen so many, but for some reason I love it every time. Yeah. I love that. He didn't get it to go. He just sat down at the table and ate it. <laughs> you know? I wonder it's how mean- many people that, yeah. I wonder how many people that actually knew who Paul Giamatti was or they like recognize the award. And then I also wonder, and I'm curious about how that photo go, got out. And that was kind of pre-planned or... No, he no, definitely, was, um, I saw that his account posted one of him outside, like triumphantly holding the globe. But inside, it looked like somebody was sitting there and just took the picture. But no one was paying attention. You're right. There were people sitting around him eating. He was smart because he went to the Westwood location, which is a little less busy. If he had gone to the Hollywood location, it probably would have been mayhem. Yeah, it looked like it was just fan photos, honestly. It wasn't like any paparazzi photos, just fans tagged to their Instagram and stuff that I saw. Yeah. Yeah, well, listen, uh, Dante, we appreciate your time. And uh, I tell everyone, I told Dax before, one of my favorite TikToker, TikTok accounts is you, the Dante Greco Show, where you just kind of show some of your videos on the streets, but also do some video commentary with your girlfriends. It's it's awesome. And I suggest everyone go check it out. Dante, thanks so much. We're going to actually you guys. go to and, and by the yeah. way, real quick, I will be streaming. I'll have my streaming pri- privileges back. I will be going to the Emmys and trying to get whatever I can this coming week. Nice. So please Good. tune well, in. Listen, we're, we're you know counting on you to keep us updated during the events. So Absolutely. you better get that shit back in order, dude. <laughs> yeah. Let us know how it really goes. Real, actually, one last thing. So the MVP, who was the coolest person that you saw all the weekend, and then I would say the, the one that was the coldest of people. Uh, you know, honestly, I didn't, there was no one that was so cold that they were rude. Everyone was on their best behavior, I think, because they know all the cameras are out. But I got to say the most excitement was Nicolas Cage, because you just don't sure. see the guy. You know, he's kind of like a mythical figure almost. And he rolls up in a big old black, uh, like Bentley or something. And I remember he played Dracula in a movie last year and he had like a very Dracula vibe when he arrived. So it was, it was interesting. <laughs> well, that's what yeah. you do when you start collecting dinosaur heads and that kind of shit at your house. Of course you're, yeah. you're living that Dracula lifestyle all the time. Love it. Yes. Dante. Thank you so much. You guys check out the Dante Greco show on TikTok. I love it. So much fun. Dante. Thank you, bud. Thanks guys. Great to see you.
Thank you. So, Dex, uh, Kevin Hart was in New York City this week. Mm-hmm. Kevin's got a new film right now on Netflix. Uh, I, Kevin, Kevin Hart movies are just fun. And he – Kevin Hart's one of those guys, when he's in New York, I have to go get him. The reason is I have a very, very – I don't want to say very, very good relationship. I have a solid relationship with him. I'm not, we're not best friends. Did you guys meet again just through him coming up in the industry and you were one of the first people to like cover him? Is that what it was? Listen, when Kevin was, not when he was first coming up. Yeah, I guess when he was first coming up in the industry. I mean, he was already doing stand up for a long time. He was starting to get some buzz, but he was a celebrity. Was he doing huge roles by any means? No. Was he a huge star? Like he was getting small, small roles in movies. But I was one of the few people that would still chase him around town. I mean, this is when he was flying commercial. This is when he was doing like the smaller TV shows. I would still chase him around and try to talk to him. This was back in 2010, 2009 maybe. Wow. And um, obviously his star just got bigger and bigger. And he's now one of the biggest stars in the world. So fortunately, like he knows me by name. And when I see him, he always stops to talk to me. He doesn't really do it with other guys on the street. And I mean, part of me is, I was like, I take, I wouldn't say pride, but I, I it's kind of cool that I feel like in some ways I was a small part of his rise of fame mm-hmm. and rise of a star because I was putting gas on that. I was giving him that, that exposure and me and trust me, I'm a very, very, the guy's super talented, but I was giving him press when not too many people were giving him that kind of attention. Well, clearly he remembers that and looks he back does. at it fun and so he was in new york and you know watch what happens live they don't tape live anymore i would say they tape live maybe about 25 percent of the time 75 percent of the time they don't i think it's because a they're getting guests who can't really wait around to that time at night and mm-hmm. they're doing a media run and they want to get all their shows done at a certain time and i got wind that kevin hart was pre-taping watch what happens live so i ran over there so Kevin comes walking down the street with his entourage. And when I mean his entourage, he's got two security guys. He's got his barber. He's got his photographer. He's got – and I'm like, oh, Kevin. I try to talk to him. The publicist goes, hey, Adam, he's super late. We'll get you on the way out. I'm like, okay, cool. And I like that I, the publicist even knows your name too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She comes – so she's like, I'm, you know, we, we got you on the way out. I was like, no worries. I fist bump Kevin. I let him go in. Like it was super quick and smooth. Like, yeah, I got you. No worries. Yeah, but is that kind of annoying because you're like, God, now I got to wait around for however long? It is. It could be worse. Luckily, Watch What Happens is not a long taping. So mm-hmm. maybe I waited like 45 minutes. I mean realistically, the show is like 20 minutes, 25 minutes because there's no commercials when they tape the show. And mm-hmm. what happened was a little bit longer because he changed because right after that, this is how busy Kevin Hart is. He does watch what happens live and then he goes and pre-tapes Jimmy Fallon show. And then right after that, he goes to his premiere, his movie premiere, does the red carpet, does the movie premiere, does the after party, goes home that night. I'm wakes sorry, up at but seven that all sounds miserable. Like to have to do so many appearances and be on for that long like I tape one show and I am like ready to go to bed. I don't know how yeah. you tape three shows in a row plus go to after parties and you, you literally have to be on the entire time. It's not – this is not – Dax, so he does Watch What Happens, post, pre-tapes Watch What Happens Live. Right after that, he goes right to Jimmy Fallon, pre-tapes Jimmy Fallon. Right after that, just, from there – You just he, told me. Oh, I know. He goes – wait, I'm not even – I didn't even get me finished the whole tour. Right after Jimmy Fallon – he goes to his movie premiere, does the movie premiere, red carpet, the after party, goes to the hotel, has to wake up at 7 a.m. because he has to do the Today Show. And then he has to do the Today Show at the 8 a.m. hour, does it again at the 10 a.m. hour. After Ugh. that, he has to do an hour talk at Sirius Radio about the film with the cast. Right after that, he has to take a car to Albany, New York, because he's doing a stand-up show that night. Oh, my God. Like, people make it sound like being a celebrity is all glamorous. This is the shit that, like, people don't know about that sounds miserable. I mean, it's hard work. Everyone wants something from you. You have to to keep going, 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 going. And if you, at any moment during this entire 12 hours or 24 hours, get pissed off or grumpy or tired or hungry, you get ripped apart in social media, in the press, whatever. But, like... That's a lot of stuff to do, a lot of pressure on you. A lot of mental pressure, not just the physical of trying to be everywhere and trying to keep the energy going. So 
I mean, the guy works really hard. But we caught up with Kevin. I asked Kevin about the Golden Globes and his thoughts on Joe Coy. All right. Good, how are good you? you? Kev, my dog. All right, good. Congratulations on the lift. We're all excited no, for it. Not that hand. I'll give you that. Point. Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year. We're excited for this film. Yes, sir. Very excited. I actually think if this film was for the Golden Globes, I think you could have got a Golden Globe for this. <laughs> no, that would make me. Tell fan people why they should see this movie. Uh, you should see it because it's different. You know, Lift is uh, it's an action movie that puts me in a different position and different conversation than you get to see me. Um, extremely leading man, global, universal. Checks all the boxes that need to be checked for a platform as big as Netflix. So uh, I'm excited. An amazing cast, amazing director. Um, you know, we really put the pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah. Last night, Golden Globes. Obviously, it didn't go the way the host wanted to go. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't get the, the laughs that he wanted to. But it was he, like he said, he got the 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 job ten days prior. As a comic who every comic bombs a little bit, has trouble on stage. Do you think he handled it well? I mean, you know I think well. Joe Coy is an amazing comedian. Uh, always has been. Joe Coy sells out of arenas all over. This is not anything that Joe Coy needs to make a moment out of. Um, that's a tough room. It's a tough room. And without the knowledge and understanding of how to navigate in that room, okay, you can have some moments, some, some bumps. But uh, Joe's fine. Joe, Joe Coy is a talented, funny fucking guy. And forever will be so you know people want to highlight the world of of bad when bad presents itself but there's a world of good behind it joe will be good and always has been so i'm i'm fine with joe i love joe i can't wait to see what else joe does uh industry or not industry he's made it this far he'll make it after he's killing it. he's crushing yes who's the last person that you met that you were starstruck by Last person that I met that I was starstruck. Like, man, I can't believe I'm, I'm seeing this person. I can't believe I'm meeting this person. Um, you know what? I had a I had a moment where I actually got to meet Joe Pesci, who's pretty cool. That's a cool yeah, one. Joe Pesci was pretty cool. Just a cool thing to say, like, wow, man, it's uh, pretty dope that Joe Pesci, Joe Pesci and I are having a conversation about possibly doing something together. I think that was a dope moment. That's pretty awesome. Two last things. If he didn't make it in comedy, what do you think he'd be doing? Uh, modeling. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, and so obviously, based on Joe Coy, I remember when you were potentially maybe going to do the Oscars. Comics hosting these type of gigs—is that something you would potentially be interested in doing at some other point, or is that uh, for me? No, I mean, you know, I'm at a point in my career where there's no value in it for me. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't think there's a, a there, 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 but I do think that it does provide um, an amazing amount of visibility and a platform of exposure, but. It's something that you have to understand. It's not the easiest, and you know, with the right personnel, the right team of people around you, you know, you can you can navigate in that space a little differently. So, to the comics of future and the comics of now, um, it is a place where you can find success. You know, when you look at the Chris Rocks, the uh, Amy Polars, the Tina Fey's, the Ricky Gervais, just to name a couple, um, Steve Martin, you know, Martin Short. Like, there's people that have had a lot of success in these in these spaces and I only named a few there's a lot yeah. more um, it also stems from the relationships like when you are in the business and you have relationships with the people in the room it's an easier room yeah when you're a little cold to the room it may be a little more difficult um, and propose you know um, a little more hesitancy to be comfortable from an audience standpoint but ultimately they still have opportunity seize the moment and make the best of it. If you don't, make the best of the one after. I hear you. Listen, I'm excited for Lyft. Thank you so much Thank for your you, time, buddy. I appreciate Always. it. The movie's awesome. I appreciate Always. it. Good to Always. see you, my friend. Hey, guys. I mean, that's a pretty good conversation, huh? That was a great... I mean, the fact that he wasn't trying to get out of there, he sat, he gave you a full-blown interview, Give and everyone around, him, <laughs> everyone around him was quiet. He just... Like, he was in the moment, which I love. Yeah. No, and I, I thought his feedback was good. Obviously, he's going to he's going to say the right things about Joe Coy, and mm -hmm. rightfully so. Joe Coy is a huge comic. Joe Coy's been on our show. Joe Coy, remember, dude, Joe Coy, the, the host of the Golden Globe is on our podcast, <laughs> and uh, Joe Coy is, uh, <laughs> and uh, Joe Joe Coy, great comedian, big in the comedian comic world. Mm -hmm. In that room, I don't know if those people are um, 
familiar, like Kevin said, with him. So therefore, there is that familiar there that I don't know who you are. Awkwardness. Like I, some of those jokes, maybe you can't get away with because you don't know me. And I thought he did what he had to do. Did the jokes land well? Not all of them did. Some were okay. What? But like he said, first of all, he got the the job ten days prior. Number one. Number two. His style of comedy is more storytelling. Mm-hmm. And it's not what that, in my opinion, like a hosting job, what they want. They want bump, bump, bump. They want to be roasted a little bit. But yet again, it's hard to roast those people in that room because they're so sensitive. Look at Taylor Swift. You know, he made <laughs> one not even crazy line about Taylor Swift. It wasn't like a, it wasn't even a joke about Taylor Swift. It's more about the NFL. And then people made stories like Taylor is really pissed about that joke. And we really don't know if she was exactly pissed over that joke. It could have been in the edit. Like, they just cut to her she at the could wrong have, time. She could have known and, like, played it up. I mean, all of these, a lot of these big celebrities know what's happening. They know the joke that's being thrown out there. Like, they're a part of it. Yeah, so... I, I, I did like his... The, the question you asked about who he's been starstruck by. I always find this such an interesting question with any celeb because it kind of gives you like a little glimpse into their head and people that they find interesting or they have looked up to over the years. So for him to say he was starstruck by Joe Pesci, I just, I like that, that, that question. And I like the answer. I don't know. I always find it just a fun, fun question. Well, I thought the interesting question, I appreciate that. The interesting question for me on the other hand was, talking to him about if he would host an award show again. And remember, a few years ago, he was going to host the Oscars and was made a lot of news. People were excited for Kevin Hart to host the Oscars. But then some people weren't excited for Kevin Hart to host the Oscars because they looked at old tweets that they found homophobic and he was trying to be funny and they found it out of context and not funny and not fun. And Kevin Hart dismissed himself from hosting the award show. Yep. And I would... I said, I- I think, though, that his answer is very on point. And oh, 100%. That being, he I said 100%. does not need it for his career. He is, he is past that. Um, however, it is also a thankless job. And all that's going to come from it is people shitting all over you. Yes, there is a great visibility. Your name gets catapulted up in the, um, the Hollywood sphere. But like at the end of the day, all you're going to do is get shit on by everyone. Everyone's going to say what a horrible job you did. That's just the territory of hosting. You have to know going into hosting an award show, you're going to get trashed. Just be okay with it. No one's ever happy with the host. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's a tough – it's one of those things where I feel like more and more comics are going to turn down these jobs because – a, people can't take a joke. B, people might not. It's so debatable what's funny and what's not funny. And you can't win. And I think it, more and more for comics, the wall, their backs are against the wall. And it's just not fun anymore. It's not fun. Yeah. And I think people are learning the hard way. There are maybe comics, were, you know, maybe we need more comedy and guys kind of in those type of positions and kind of be easy on them because at the end of the day, they're – they have a better batting average than most people, and th- their goal is to try to be funny. So we we need Joan Rivers back. That's what we need. Oh, man, can you like, imagine if Joan she Rivers hosted? Was the freaking funniest woman on the planet, but she could get away with anything with any joke. She got the pass all the time, and like that's what we need in comedy again, where people can like laugh and just have a good time and be like, yeah, like she poked fun at a certain group of people or whatever, but like. It's not always focused on that. She's making fun of everyone. And that's what like brings people together is like laughing as a society at the dumb stuff that we put ourselves through. Whatever the case is, I just wish we had that. I feel like it's everything's so censored now. Yeah. A part of me feels like don't even put like a Joe Coy in there. Put even a lesser comedian in there who really doesn't give a shit and will really roast the room and say, I do not care. I mean, Joe Coy, I think, handled it very well. I think mm-hmm. even when the jokes didn't go over well, he addressed the the awkwardness in the room. And I think he did seem a little bit uncomfortable and nervous at times, and rightfully so. He should be. It was a weird – when you're live on TV like that, which I don't know if he's ever 
been in that type of position, but I thought he handled it well for what it was. So, Dex, as I'm waiting for Kevin Hart to come out, because he told me he'll get me as he waits, mm-hmm. Andy Cohen comes out. And I guess oh. Andy Cohen comes out right even before the audience leaves the show. He's like right out the door, but Andy's a busy guy. He's got kids. You, he does. You know, they do that on purpose a lot of times. They will yeah, hold Ellen the did. audience. Uh, Ellen did it all the time. You hold the audience. You let the host go. They get in their car. They leave. And once they're clear, that's when they let the audience out so that they're not just, like, mobbed on the way out every time. And people love Andy. And Andy is a very approachable guy. He's very good to fans. He's talked about being approachable to fans. He says, obviously, with, if he's with his kid, you know, just wave and say hi. If he's alone... You know, obviously he'll take a quick photo with you. He handles it very well. He came out with no security. He just comes out by himself. But he came out really quick. And, but he's also, he's got like a lot of jobs. Caught up with Andy. And did you know, did you hear what happened with Andy Cohen not too long ago? No. That he got scammed out of money? No, I didn't hear that. Yeah, he was scammed out of a lot of money. Uh, and he talks, he, I asked him about it and he tells me all about it. There's the man. What's up? What's up, buddy? How you doing? How are you doing? Good to see you. You looking good, good my friend? You looking fresh? You're looking good. I'm trying, baby. I was in my car yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, you look good. Trying, oh, there's my good. guy. Listen, I heard about the news. You got scammed recently. Unfortunately. Yes. How, how do you people prevent something like that from happening? Because I'm scared about yes. that happening. Yes. Don't look, you look closely at the email address and people are emailing you saying they're from somewhere. If someone calls you and says they're from the bank or they're some, from somewhere, say you'll call them back. Call the number on the back of your card yeah. or go to your bank. Did you? Get- it can happen to anyone. I'm not. I don't consider myself a foolish person, but it happened to me. Yeah, I had family members who yes. significantly got lost a lot of money. Yeah, Did yeah. You, were you able to get the money back at all? How does that work as far as getting the money? I'm, I'm on it. You're on it. Yeah. Interesting, man. Yeah. And how, was there something? Did they call you, or how exactly? It started online, and then they called, and they had information that I had unwittingly given them yeah and so that made me think they were really from my bank oh, they my, were very good at what they did my stomach really hurts good. for you because I, I know I, terrible yeah. buddy it can happen to anyone i appreciate it buddy. Yeah. good to see you Thanks, how, how much did they take do you know did so he, say? he didn't say how much but I, I, they probably took a, a a good amount um it's you know I, he, I think i think this is such a good psa for people because you look at someone like Andy Cohen, you're like super smart, super intelligent, someone who run has run a network that has like really catapulted all these shows to sur- superstar and like all this kind of stuff, but yet can be tricked just like the rest of us in some phishing scheme out there. And so you really have to pay attention to what you're doing and the, the phone calls you get. I always worry about that for like older people, grandmas, grandpas, stuff like that, where, you know, it's getting so easy or and then they're getting so good at what they do. They call and they can impersonate their grandchildren and say, Hey, this is Dax calling. I just need some money so I can get out to see you. And next thing you know, grandpa and grandma are, you know, wiring over money or something. It's, it's wild. Yeah. I had a family member who my grandfather who passed, but he got scammed out of six figures, you know, like wow. there, there was, more than a hundred as far we only know it's a hundred thousand dollars it could have been more than a hundred thousand dollars worth um that he got scammed even like people showed up at his house uh for andy he said and i quote i got scammed by someone calling saying they were a fraud alert from my bank and he said i did lose my card and i put in for it and i got an email saying there might be fraud on your account i was like oh this is the this is attached to the card i lost um, he says, I continue to, uh, well, he says, I logged into my bank account. It asked me for my Apple ID and password. And I was like, okay, this never happens. So I bailed, but I already logged into my bank app. And I think logging into the site gave them access to my bank app. So they, you know, whoever they took, they had access to his, to his, all I got to imagine accounts. that was like a holy shit, cha-ching. Cause you know, he's worth a lot of money. Yeah, that's scary though. And again, like you said, we always think it happens to old people, but it could happen to young. And I get so many emails that I get nervous about. It happened. It almost happened to me once, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Andy Cohen talking I mean, you about click on, that. You literally click on the wrong th- email. You click on the wrong thing in text. I mean, how many times have you got a text these days, which is like, "Hey, just saw this photo of us together from back in the day." Like, blah blah blah, and it makes you want to click on the link because you're like. Wait, who who is this that we used to be friends? Like maybe if I click on it, I'll see the photo and remember 
who's not in my phone now. I mean, they are so sneaky. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they really are. So then, listen, Dax, I'm, I'm like sort of like wrapping up my night. About yeah. to go get some pizza or something like that because I got to eat cheap. And, uh, dude, by the way, eating – how – Food is expensive these days, huh? <laughs> well, How I just expensive? found a sushi place by my house that's like 50% off all the time. And it's no so way. Good. You yeah. trust it? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a great place. Like, it's packed to the brim every time we go. But because it's so inexpensive, like, we had four of us. The bill came and it was like 50 bucks a couple. I'm like, I don't understand how we just ate sushi for $50. Like, Taco Bell these days for my whole family is getting up to 50 bucks. Yeah. So yeah, it's- going out to sushi and getting a good meal and walking away for 50 bucks for me and my wife is wild. <laughs> Dude, slice of pizza in New York used to be like two, three bucks, maybe three fifty one one topping. Now two slices is like eleven bucks. I'm like, man, like that is and hey, if this dude. sushi place wants to pay us, I will gladly say their name on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's the thing. I get nervous. If it's that cheap, is it that good? But you're saying it's good. You're no, saying it's, it's good. It, I'm telling you, packed every time we go. Word got out. Word yeah, got dude. out quick, huh? Oh, yeah. um, so I, I, as I'm like kind of wrapping up the night, see his big guy walking down the street. Who is it but Check. Charles Barkley? Oh, the other big guy. Yeah, the other big guy. Charles, <laughs> Jack is big. Charles is big, but he's also like wide. His shoulders mm-hmm. are just like he's he's like an interesting athlete because he could have been like a fullback, but obviously he was a great rebounder in the NBA Hall of Famer. Uh, but Charles Barkley, and dude, we talk about so many different topics. It's a podcast in itself. Like it's like honestly, I can make it like a five minute podcast real quick. But you know, listen to this Charles Barkley interview. How are you, sir? Good I'm to good. see you. What's Happy that? New Year, my friend. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Great to see you. Happy New Year. Thank How's you. How's 2024 for you so far? That's good. It's new. Yeah. All fun and games. Are you enjoying the CNN project we're going with Gail? I mean, yeah, I'm having a good time doing it. Yeah. It's an adjustment because they have to go back and forth between Atlanta and New York, but I'm having a good time. What's the future of the show? Like, what oh, I don't know. We just take it one, one few months at a time. It's, what do you? You've done a lot. Is there anything else you haven't done in the industry? Like, will we see you start to act at all? No, no, no. I don't want to do that. I'm just having fun with Gail. I try to do CNN a favor. I'm just having fun with Gail. That's it. Would you get into politics at all? No, yeah. no politics. Definitely sit not. Back, sit back, relax, man. I'm on the back nine of life, enjoying life. Well, the Knicks be good. Like, what oh, the Knicks are great. That was a great trade by the Knicks. I love them getting him. You know, they haven't lost since they got him. I yeah. really thought that was a great trade. Really excited uh, for them. Great trade by the Knicks. Great trade. Not a good trade, a great trade. Draymond Green. I yeah. feel like- glad to have him back. Yeah. Yeah, um, he made a mistake. He's made some mistakes, but I'm glad to have him back. He's a very good basketball player. He's good for the NBA. I'm glad he's back. People say he's, like, auditioning to work with you guys eventually. Well, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. But like I say, yeah, he made some mistakes. He got penalized. I'm glad to have him back. Yeah. Um, you were at the Golden Globes last night. Joe Coy hosted. He had yeah. little troubles with hosting the yeah. show. You know, some jokes went over well, some jokes bombed. People say it's a tough crowd, but uh, well, I think it's a tough crowd. But I think that I think the main thing he was I, he looked like he was nervous. You just gotta have fun in those situations. You can't. It's a win-win situation. Yeah, it's not a lose-win situation. You get to host the Golden Globe, you go out there, you have fun. If you do a good job, it's great. And then it's one of those things you do. It's a it's a really cool thing. Was it something you would ever do? Would you ever host? Because I think people would love to be. You know, you're very blunt. You're very uh, I would against. really. I'd be. It'd, it'd be interesting. Uh, <laughs> But like I say, it's a, like you go and you do it. You just try to have fun. You're trying to make people laugh and have a good time. It's not like uh, you take it that serious. It's yeah. not life or death. Yeah. Cat Williams made a lot of news this past yeah. week. What are your thoughts on the whole Cat Williams situation? Well, I think it's really an unfortunate situation because, number one, you have to remember something. When you say something, it's your truth. That doesn't yeah. make it true. It's true. Uh, yeah. It's that, very, it's so, and I like, uh, uh, I know Cat a little bit. I know Cedric a little bit. You know, I know Kevin Hart and Steven. I like all those guys. And they're all trying to make a great living. But you have to remember something. When you say something, it's your truth. That doesn't make it the truth. That's yeah. the difference. It's a good perspective. Yeah. Right. Best investment you ever made and the worst investment you ever made? Uh, the best investment was probably Nike stock options. Okay. Uh, best investment ever. 
Uh, worst investment was uh, probably two people I invested with, Lance Lesnick and Donald Watkins. <laughs> two crooks I invested with. Those were the two worst. How do you avoid, but someone like you, obviously people are always approach you with business and stuff like that. How do you kind of shuffle through the business when people always kind of approach you and say, hey, be involved in this project, that project? Oh yeah, you get a hundred of those a week. You just have to trust people and hope you get invested with the right people. Are you I, I screwed up twice with uh, Lance Lesnick and Donald Watkins. <laughs> but you know what? Hey. It, it, in all investment, at some point you have to trust the people and yeah. you hope they don't screw you. Are you a cryptocurrency guy? No, no, no. crypto. My, no. Both of my guys said no to crypto and I got to give them applause. Shout out to uh, my man Stuart and my guy Scott. They both told me it's a no-go. They, but they would like to say, they say if I want to do it, it was my money. I can do whatever the hell I want to do with it. But they both said no, and I give them credit. They were right. Two last things. Who's the coolest name you have on your phone? The one where you're like, I can't believe I have this person's number. Gail King. <laughs> well, then, my last question: What's the dinner that you went to? We're like, this is the coolest dinner. Like, I, again, the, I can't believe I'm sitting at the table with these people and breaking bread. Oh, probably at uh, President Obama's 50th birthday party at the White House. I was sitting at a table with Grant Hill, Jay Z, Steve Harvey, Emmett Smith. We were, we were on like the Rose Garden at like a barbecue. That was one of the coolest experiences of my life. I love it. Yeah. Dude, you're the best. Good All to right, see you. Honestly, I love the show on uh, I think you're doing you. a great job. All I right, you be best. safe. Good Take to care see you. Thank you. Dude, that dinner table. Can you imagine all those people at one table? Uh, insane. Yeah. Have you had a dinner table, that, like a dinner you went to, like I can't believe I'm sitting with these people or no? Have you had one of those yeah. experiences? It's literally my family every night. <laughs> you, uh, what am man. I doing with these people? How did they get yeah. here? What do they do? How did they get in the house? Is that um, the most random interview, by the way? It's super random, super random. But I love. Is it, it weird? Because, no, I think it was great. The, I I thought it was really funny. It's like Gail King, like that's the number that was the most famous person or the what the person that you were shocked about. I well, love Gail, but what a random name to throw out. Listen, he's promoting a show on CNN right now, so uh, that's uh, that's what he's doing. Which it's funny, he he and Gail have this show on CNN right now. It's not being promoted, and I think what's happened was, from what I understand, what I'm hearing, is that the show, basically, the head of CNN thought about the show, put it on CNN. That guy lost his job. They put in a new guy, and the new guy's like. Listen, this is not what I want to do, but I'm going to put the show on. We'll just put the show on. You know, that you guys are already getting paid and just let's do the show. You know, I'm not going to and see what happens. The show itself, I think, is struggling a little bit, but it's also CNN ratings are just not that great. So it, yeah. I don't think it's really them because people love Charles Barkley. I just don't think people even know that this thing exists. That it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. But. Yeah, cool guy. He talks about Cat Williams, and uh, he had a good perspective on Cat Williams. Cat Williams is making a lot of news uh, this past week for going after a lot of comedians. Um, did you hear about this stuff that's going on? Yeah, I, no, I know he was on the Shannon Sharp podcast, and he was on there for like three hours just going into to lengths about everything, not holding back about really anything. I, I think the one part that kind of had caught my attention – was uh, him talking about all the money that he could have made, that he basically turned down four $50 million opportunities um, to protect his integrity is what he said. But I mean, like, think about the money that, I mean, that's $200 million in potential earnings that he, I guess he passed out on, or passed on, i sorry, um, just because he didn't want to, or he thought that it was, you know, against his ethics or whatever. Just a lot of shocking stuff like this. He made a lot of news. What was the headline that kind of caught your attention? I just thought it was interesting how he went after – I mean he went after everyone. I mean he went after everyone. So uh, the part that – to me, I'm very interested in he, – he brought up Kevin Hart and he brought up that mm-hmm. – he said Kevin Hart was a Hollywood plant. And we're hearing that term a lot lately. And I don't think Kevin Hart was a Hollywood plant because I know how hard Kevin Hart has worked. Mm-hmm. But I'm curious if that real if there is stuff going on with that where the I industry don't, so, kind of bets on people. Okay, I I think that the industry does bet on people, but that doesn't mean that they're a Hollywood plant. It means that people see talent in them and push the powers that be behind them. You know what I'm saying? Like. You see this person is going somewhere. I believe in them. I'm going to push them to 
to really succeed. I see that happening. I mean, I, I think, and I, I don't know if I've talked about it on here, but I think back in the day when it was Carson Daly and Ryan Seacrest and both of them were kind of coming up, uh, Carson kind of derailed a little bit and a lot of people put their power and effort and money and everything behind Seacrest and he became like the biggest host in Hollywood. Interesting. I never really thought about that, the difference between those two guys because it kind of came up at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, um, but then yeah, obviously but Carson, he came back, you know, crushed it with the voice. Now he does all the, uh, hosting for it. He's on NBC, right? In the morning he's on yeah. the, uh, Today show. It's called. Today show. Yeah. So don't get me wrong. He's done phenomenal for himself, but there was a time period in there where Seacrest was literally the biggest host in the world because of American Idol. And you know, what's funny. I say in the world. But it's not in the world because I have people come in from Germany, like my good friends. They don't know who Seacrest is. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't know who Seacrest is? And they're like, yeah, I, I, name, I have never heard that name before. To me, that's wild. When there is someone so famous here in America and you, someone from another country has no idea who they are. And it makes sense because he's, he's not a singer. That's how you really be famous around the world or an athlete. He's a host in English of shows in English. So kind of funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, he, but I love Cat Williams. I think Cat, I've never met him personally, but his stand up to me, like his specials are just, he's great. And people don't talk about it enough, but very funny guy, very talented guy. They definitely had to have this conversation before him in, uh, was it Shannon Sharp he did the conversation with? Yeah. Um, they probably had a conversation before saying, listen, we're going to go after everyone because they, they knew they were going to shock some people. I'm surprised he decided to do it with Shannon Sharp, but I mean, maybe they're yeah. buddies. They've been friends for a while and he knew like, I'm going to get a shit ton of press off this. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Uh, golden Globes. Yeah, pretty and big got a, buddy. Yeah. Fun. And honestly, that was just like in a day. I just did that all in a day. So that was kind of fun. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, that's all I got in a day. Now I'm excited. We have a month. No, we got a little more than it. We got about two months, I guess, until the Oscars to figure out what movies you're going to watch. I actually do get excited for the Oscars. I used to get excited for them more when you're more familiar with all the films, but now there's you really don't know. They're kind of more unique films. But again, they come at the perfect time of year when there's nothing to do except for me. Like, at least you're hibernating a little bit and you watch these movies. So... Yeah, I'm excited for them. But thank you guys for watching our podcast and checking it out. Follow us on YouTube. Uh, like and subscribe. We have a private Facebook group called Off the Record. Follow us. Join the group. Join the chat. It's a really fun community. Follow me at Adam Glynn. Follow Dax Holt at Dax Holt. See you guys next week. we got some good ones coming up. Bye. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.